Najee, welcome to Fayetteville. How you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm good, man. Nice to meet you. How long have you been here? I've been here since June. And what do you think so far? I'm enjoying the experience. You're from Hattiesburg. You played four years at Southern Miss. No, for A little bit different there than here. Yeah. What, no. What's the biggest difference? Uh, pretty much just, no, it's just a transition from ACC from uh, Sunbelt. Just a different experience itself, you know, more intensity, you know, stuff like that. If somebody were watching you for the first time, what do you think they're going to notice? What are they going to see? Well, my energy, my intensity level, like on, on both ends. I just like to, like to bring the energy. This season, he has 10 here tonight. Did I say Harris? So how did you end up at JUCO? Why, why did you end up there? Were you getting recruited? Not really getting too, too recruited? Like, what was your situation? So pretty much um, I played when I was playing there. Like, uh, you know, you got to go through the clearinghouse and stuff like that. So I play AAU, but I didn't play a lot of AAU. You know, that's how you get pretty much a lot of your attention. You didn't play a lot of summer ball? No, I never really just played a lot of summer ball, but I played a lot uh, for 12, my like 10th, 12th grade year. Uh -huh. So like, um, I really never just had the, the big attention around my name. So like, uh, I had Brian Benner, he was pretty much uh, on me hard and pretty much was listening to him. And I liked the things that he said as far as like selling my game and just giving me the attention that I need. He would recruit me like my 12th grade year, and so like um I had other people recruit me too, but it was like I really enjoyed what he was saying. He ended up getting me to Division One like within a semester. So how'd you get to to Southern Miss? Did they kind of know that, that kind of like they had paid attention to you? Like hey, go to JUCO for a semester, and then we can get you in here. Come out of high school to JUCO, I. I didn't have no Division One offers, but pretty much all JUCO. So once I uh, came to JUCO, like we'll have like practices where we have you know Division One coaches coming in, just watching, seeing you play like from practice. So like you can already have that relationship for when you build in the season. But unfortunately, I, I didn't get to play the season, but I had to build a relationship with one of the coaches before the season. He was just watching me in and out of practice. So like pretty much just building a relationship, and uh, we had a. We had some summer games that actually got a good footage of me, and they were pretty much like, that's all I needed to see. So when did you start to see some some progress? Like my sophomore year, like when things started to come along, I started getting in like basketball shape, practice shape, and like um, I was able to compete. I started seeing a couple of blimps of, my, of like my old self, and like gaining my confidence back and things like that. You get healthy, do you see things start to happen for you at Southern Miss? Like my first two years, I red shirt, and then I had COVID, the COVID year. So I never had that actual game experience. So like freshman year, I was getting back healthy. Sophomore year, I was still getting back healthy. But um, the third year, I actually got comfortable with um, getting that game experience. Like I didn't start, but I still got, you know, a feel for the game, man. I can see that I still got a chance. I can. I can make a big year coming out of next year. Then you go in the transfer portal. You say, hey, I got a chance to play at a higher level. After, after that season, I felt like I can get bigger and better. And like like I said, SEC was all one of the leagues I wanted to play in. And I ended up testing it out and getting good feedback. I ended up being here at Fayetteville. What are your expectations here now? What are your dreams? Uh, you know, I just want, you know, individually wise, you know, I want to keep keep myself going as far as what I come to last season, you know, just keep going up the ladder. And as far as team-wise, I'm going to you know, help the team win. What are your dreams beyond college? You know, I want to play professionally. That was one of the reasons why uh, I stuck with this thing because I'm um, kind of like an investment. Like, even though you go through things, you got to see it. You got to see the bigger picture as far as, you know, I see that I can play professionally. And that's one of my main goals. So when you're done being a Razorback, how do you hope people will remember your time here? I just wanna, I be, I just wanna be remembered as far as like you know, you know someone they remember that like actually played, you know, had a had a big impact, and just you know help help the program keep going in the, in the direction that it once was before I got here. So we can't wait to watch you play, man. Yes, sir. I'm it's gonna be fun running out there hearing all those people. It's gonna be new for me. <laughs> yeah, they gonna be they gonna be the most hyped crowd you think you played in front of. Yeah, um, so new we had a we had a pretty pretty decent crowd, but and then like the SEC level, and I'm excited.
Alabama and Georgia for cold beers at Pinky Masters in Savannah, neck bones and greens at Bullies in Jackson, and bologna on white in a country store. True South Season 6, Episode 5, tonight. Emerson Burris was able to check in with Coach Richie at the half to get his thoughts on the first. Emerson, what do you have to say? Coach told me that the kids are fighting hard. Arkansas is making them play faster than they like, but they either need to get fouled or play off the two. He said they're going to keep fighting and playing hard through this second half. Brett? I'll tell you what, Manny, I can see where Arkansas might speed you up at times. Yeah, they, they, they play aggressive. We talked about it early on uh, in the broadcast where, where they sometimes get fouls, but the other side of that is – you force teams into turnovers, you force teams into shots that they don't want. This Caleb Battle with the drive Battle to the rim. For two. He's so good and, and, and just can score at all three levels. Obviously, he can knock the three down with the best of them. But as an underrated quick first step, nice pass by Witt right there. But an underrated quick first step, man, it just it says he wears that number zero because that's how many people on this earth can guard him, and he's showing it. Plus joked the other day that he and JT Note must be related. Note and uh, Caleb Battle both love to launch and score. And there's Chandler Lawson having one of his better offensive performances. Up to nine points and a chance to complete a three-point putt. Yeah, he's, he's been such a luxury for this Arkansas Razorback team. Mainly on the defensive end, but right here, just using those long arms. Doesn't really have to jump that high before you can put it in the back. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Unbelievable. One thing Arkansas has done with incredible regularity is get to the free throw line. In fact, they came in many 29 free throw attempts a game. That's fifth best in the country. They shot a total of two free throws in that first half. 
free throws are a part of their game. It's, you know, as we say, they're aggressive on defense. They're also aggressive on offense, and that means getting to the free throw line. So you'll see that change up here in the second half as they try to get more aggressive, get to that free throw line. Nice job by Molnar to get Lawson up in the air and have a chance now to complete a three-point play of his own. Is that a case where Lawson doesn't need to be in the air to be able to block this shot? He really doesn't. See right there. And, and someone like him, he's just got to work on the verticality. Just put those arms straight up in the air. Don't lean any. He kind of leaned over a little bit on that one. That's why the ref called the foul. But jump straight up. Put those long arms in the air. It's pretty tough to score over. This is the free throw. Another non-conference battle here at Bud Walton Arena. Battle. Quick first step. Down the lane, able to lean back and score. That was nifty. In the last four games before this one, Battle had scored 84 points in 39 field goal attempts. <laughs> Some efficiency. Shot's no good. He had it briefly. Blocker threw it off Heen. And Battle came up with it. Not a good pass. Taken away by Witt. Ahead of the pack. Well, he got there in the blink of an eye and scored. What's good? Tough player to knock the, sh knock the three down, but utilizes that dribble drive as well. Arkansas, turnover you don't want to have right there. Letting Furman hang around a little bit. Well, like I said it a couple of days ago, Furman's one of the best coach teams in the country, and I'm thinking that uh, the people here tonight are believing the same thing. Battle! Jack Knight in the lane, hard fall. Let's see if he's okay. I'm not sure if he hit his face. Looks like his neck. He, he gets that ball, and it is going up to the rim. You see right here. I know one thing. If he realizes he gets to shoot free throws, he will miraculously be okay. <laughs> and what's been unique about Battle is the games he has had this year and how similar they have looked because he seems to be at this 21-point-a-game plateau. That's what he scored against Duke the other night. Five rebounds, five assists, and while that's not unusual, the fact is, Manny, he's done it four times this year. And 21 points in a game where he's made exactly five field goals, exactly three three-pointers, and eight free throws. Yeah, that's like seen, a comment. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. He made solar eclipse. <laughs> he may watch basketball for another hundred years and not see a guy have four games <laughs> exactly in his first eight line. with the exact same stat line. <laughs> Hey, he needs to go play the lottery. Mike Gate would outdid himself on that one. You talk about <laughs> speeding somebody up, there was a good example with the geese. Yeah. Just get, just get that pressure on them, make them take a, a little bit tougher shot than they're used to. That's a formula for success. Good mind saying to still just take that open 16-foot jump shot. I wonder if Jalen Graham's going to shoot it. I think he is. With the left hand, left it short. So close, so close. <laughs> I love the footwork. Williams defended by Brazil. Shoots a three over TV and knocks it down. Williams with 18 points, and here come the Paladins again. Just knocking shots down. Williams stepping up. You know, you got your best player, your leading scorer, hurt on the bench. And it's next man up. That's what Division I college basketball is all about. Kayla Fowler with a shot clock winding down. See if he goes to work. Tough three, way off the mark. Rebound to Graham. Battle. Leading in. Is Williams going to get the foul here? It's Molnar instead. Williams reacted as if to say, I did not foul yeah, him. And he don't didn't. give that one to me. <laughs> Kids, if you're watching this and you're you're, you're wanting to be, you know, a, a high-level Division One basketball player, you know, look at what Caleb Battle does. He shot a shot, hit the backboard, didn't come anywhere close. Got the ball right after and attacked the basket. Short-term memory. Basketball, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to miss shots. You might miss them. You might airball them. You might hit the hit the backboard. You got to have short-term memory. The game is so fast. You see right there. This is got it back, back to the free throw line, and he's going to score two points off of it. Have short-term memory and keep your confidence. Oh, I jinxed the two points. You but sure did. 
For a guy who shot 89%. <laughs> I shot 89%. I thought I could say it. But I did I too. Hey, but you got an announcers. We have to, yeah, we have to stop. I just let goes, you go. This goes for every announcer in college <laughs> basketball. Let's just stop talking about free throws made before the bigger. Steph Curry, I've seen it a, a thousand times. They come to the free throw line. The guy's the best free throw shooter in the history of the world and misses. Fans don't like that call. He drew the foul. Jalen Graham with a couple of fouls, and his ability to stay on the floor for more than a couple of minutes without picking up fouls has been a challenge. Yeah. You know, Moss really has three guys he can rotate at that five, with Lawson and, and Graham for the most part, occasionally they fall, but a time Mitchell, you have to be able to play without getting quick fouls. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a skill in basketball. His fans love in the miss there. Didn't think that that was a foul, but that's a skill. you, you got to be able to be available for your team. And stay on the floor, and a big part of that is, is knowing how to not foul, or at least get away with it in front of the rest. Team was one of two. He had 16 points against Princeton, five so far this evening. He's had some big games, though, against South Carolina and some of the others on the big stage that Furman has played in. He'll need more tonight, but still, it's been about a four to a six-point game most of the evening. Yeah. Arkansas can't put him away. Furman not quite there to tie the game yet. There's the spin, but there was also a slip. Debo Davis. Oh my goodness, that was wide right. Not the offensive possession you want if you're Arkansas. What's Furman doing defensively right now in some of those sequences where Arkansas is not getting the look that they would yeah, like? Yeah, just taking away the easy basket. That's the one thing that you can do as a defense. It sounds simple, but just don't give up the, the cheap drive or the wide open shot. And it make guys hit shots over you. Make guys take tough shots. That's the guy you might want to guard. He misses an open three, but Witt runs down the long rebound. Yeah. Next May 3 for the Paladins will be their 10th. Will it be here? Blocker rebounds to miss. That's another full court turnover. The geese. And that should be Furman Ball. And they're going to say it's Arkansas basketball. Time out. We had a five point game at the half. And that's where we remain as we step aside. Mark Mitchell from Duke, who played Arkansas on Monday, and Grady Dick, who was a first-round pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, currently playing for the Raptors. Brett? Yeah, Grady Dick will get your attention, but for Blocker, man, he left home at the age of 15 to go get that experience. And Bowser is one of these players that I know Furman's really high on. They feel like they have a steal. But it's amazing how we're hearing more and more about the Sunrises and the Lynx in addition to Montverde and IMG. Yeah, I mean, and it, it shows with guys like Blocker where, you know, they come in, they're ready to go. He said he left home at Good 15. He, he, you're, you're forced to, to grow up and mature and, and, and be fearless. And he comes right in as a true freshman. And, you know, he looks like a seasoned SEC point guard. And it's something you don't always get with just regular high school hoops. Uh, so that, that, that prep school movement will continue to, to continue to expand. Nifty pass. There's Blocker on the catch. And he can't convert. I'm with you, though. Fearless has been the term that's been used to describe Blocker. You know, your eight games in your college career, you've played against Duke. You've played against North Carolina, Stanford, and Memphis. And you're also playing with 22- and 23-year-olds on your own team. So it's a little bit hard to kind of find your path. Yeah, and I mean, if you just watch how the older graduates, the fifth-year seniors in the rack with Blocker, they have respect for him. You know, coming in as a freshman, a lot of the times it's building your own confidence, but then also winning the respect of the upperclassmen. And you can just see how they talk to him, how they interact. They're, talking, they're picking his brain on things that he sees. He's gained the respect of guys who have been around the block. You know, Mark, there's a guy who played in the Final Four. Uh, and he's right. gained the respect of those guys. So that, that's super impressive. And that's something that the coaching staff sees, and that's why he's out there on the court. If he wanted to hit one of two free throws while we were talking about him, that would have been okay. Yeah, that would have been, been good, but... <laughs> Hey, Williams with an air ball. Maybe Furman cooling off yeah. just a bit from distance. They've been stuck on nine makes for a while. Yeah, they've had a few good looks and haven't been able to convert and see if the, those percentages start to, to right size a little bit. There's Battle. What a quick release. And then Perry, the three-pointer, 14 for Battle in the game. Can't give him that wide open of a look. 
If he gets to 21 points, do you just shut it down to have that point total again for I'm, five games? You know, at this point, you gotta, we gotta, you gotta force him to get another basket. We like, can't have the same exact Sandler on every game of the season. Vanderwall was wide open. A young man who had an appendectomy back on November 20th. And, He's able to play at Princeton, and they're happy to have him back considering the other injuries. That's the easiest basket he'll have all year. And Huey went a couple of fouls away from the ball in the first half, much to the dismay of Coach Ritchie. Just got another one. That's his third. Team foul number six. Arkansas will be shooting the remainder of the game, and we're at the 14 11 mark. Yeah, you don't want to. Had that many fouls this early on, especially with a team that's as aggressive as Arkansas, where you're going to get a couple just fighting fouls when they're driving the basket, they're going to the free throw line every other time. Four of 17 since that red hot start. Sometimes you like to think you're doing things defensively, other times you just hope with the randomness of the game that a few will not go in. Mitchell with the catch and the score. Oh, thread the needle battle. Not normally one getting assists, but you know when you're that much of a score and you draw the defense on you, you guys can get open and you can find them. Does feel like the Paladins could uh, use a hit here at some point. McGee's got by Devo, but he couldn't finish at the rim. Brazil on the drive, got flipped in the air. Somehow that fell through. He'll score and a chance for one more on a hard landing by TV2. <laughs> Those are some big legs to undercut. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. tough. And someone that tall, I don't know if their body should be able to do what, what Brazil's can do. This might be a bit like Gumby right here <laughs> when he gets contorted right about here. Oh, oh. goodness gracious. He's making highlights when he's not dunking. Yeah. Him. Like every single one of his plays, it's something that gets around <laughs> off their feet. A deep three, so, you know, when, when momentum's high, a dunk, plays like that. That would have hurt a lot more had that shot not gone in. Yeah, yeah I mean, if, if anything, a, a team, you know, obviously a team's going to draft him off of the potential of him, you know, potentially being an all star. But if anything, <laughs> draft him and, and get some butts in your seats, and sell some tickets. <laughs> the lead has grown to 11. Is that a foul on battle? Indeed it is, as he knocked down Alex Williams. Just the third team foul, though, on the Hawks. Again, Coach Moss, when you talk to him, he knows exactly every upset that happened in college basketball. He was talking about UC San Diego almost defeating San Diego State did. How UCLA almost got upset. He was telling his team about Mississippi State losing to Southern, Southern last night. Yeah. It happens every single night, and he doesn't miss a one of those. Yeah, and yeah I mean, most of it, you, you would classify him as a basketball junkie yes. guy. Just, just loves the game. It's a knockdown from Huey, but I think it's also a constant reminder to his team yep. that you can't let up any night. In college basketball. Well, they, as they always say that there's more NCAA tournament upsets day one than there are on day two. Because you get that day to see, oh, wow, nope, that's not going to be, I'm not going to be plastered on every sports news out, outlet uh, of me, my team getting You're upset. Right. So, yeah, it, it, it's, it's important to remind guys, like, hey, these things happen. Got to be ready and play well. Nice play by Bowser, the freshman we were just talking about. He's going to lean in and miss that. Follows High his school miss. teammates. Can't quite coax it in. Blocker and Bowser were going at it. And a foul going against the Razorbacks. Bowser really wanted to finish that one. Coach Ritchie said this kid's going to be an all-conference performer. 7-5 wingspan, but maybe just go up and hammer that yeah, one Yeah, just don't dunk that one. I mean, that's, that's the next iteration. You're right up there at the rim with those long arms. Don't flush it down. I'll tell you what, what this Furman team has done well, uh, they, they, they've done well attacking the offensive glass. They, whether they don't get it, then they try to tip it out. They, they do a good job of trying to give that second effort. You know, and they lost to Princeton based on that, and it That's seems right. like they're coming in and trying to do the same thing to Arkansas. So, Geese, remember, he had the shot to beat Virginia, not this time. Now, he hasn't really had it going. Debo Davis. Down the lane, no. Huey the rebound. Ray thought that was going to go in. You can always count on Devo Davis. 
When you need a basket or you need a play, he's always there. That's a nice backup. Yeah, That's something that Coach Musselman was really talking about, their ability to cut to the rim. And we've seen it a couple of times tonight. And that was an important basket. Yeah, big basket. And you see, Arkansas can push the lead out to 9-10. And then this Herman team is kind of hanging around. To me, this feels a little bit like the game Arkansas played last year with Northern Iowa. Oh. They kept hitting the threes, and you get down to two, three minutes, and it's still a four or five point game as Debo scores. Good pass there by, by Mitchell. Spearheaded by Blocker. Hawks with numbers if they want to push. Dramon Mark. Pass that to Debo from point blank range. Chandler Lawson! Chandler one! And the big man has put in a dozen tonight, far exceeding his per game average. Manny Chandler Lawson is uh, getting involved tonight offensively for Arkansas. He is having a big game, and it's just in the right spot at the right time, using that wingspan, being strong. Arkansas moved the lead to 10. You can just see by the expression, the smile on his face, how much he was looking forward to it, and he will always be able to go back to Durham and remind the locals about being part of that win against the Blue Devils. Yeah, I mean, I, I, as players, every every player always has those games that mean a little bit more. What was yours? What was the biggest game you remember winning and being a part? Um, personally, when we would beat the beat Missouri Tiger, beat their tail, just because. That's where, you know, my, my dad had coached before coming to Arkansas, and a lot of my growth years in basketball were in Missouri, in Columbia, so I'd love to go to Missouri Arena and, and get a win there. So uh, you're just like L. Ellis. You go back to your oh, hometown, yeah. and yeah, you go it back. means a little bit more. It means a little bit more. You know, That'd I'd be a good slogan for a cop. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> can, we, can we coin that? Is that ours? Put that on some t-shirts. Yeah. Chandler Lawson, after completing the three-point play, goes to the bench with 13. Providence still hanging around, as you would expect. This team's won 54 games since the start of 2021. Tremont Mark with the takeaway. Is he going to go all the way to the rim? Nice step throw and the basket. Six for Mark, and it's just great to see him back on the court. The Geese, that was a hard pass. For Bowser. Hawks try to turn a steal into offense again. Bayla! I thought uh, Battle was going to score again in transition, but Caleb was uh, unable to convert. Let's go back and take a look at what Mark was able to do. And Manny, I was just watching in to see how this guy was moving from one end to the other. Yeah, he looks fine. Um, Herman kind of telegraphing the pass, and you got Mark getting back into the flow of things. Furman, you, you get a you lead down to, to six, and then you let Arkansas get a couple turnovers and get a couple runs. I mean, Arkansas is just, just such a good team, and, and, you know, they can score in bunches, and you blink, and the score goes from six to 14, it just does. like that. And, and that's where Furman had turnovers on six of their seven possessions towards the end of that game against Princeton, and Princeton – had something like 28 points off turnovers to two for the Pavilion. So it's hard to win in that type of ratio. And Arkansas has capitalized on a few here in just the last two or three minutes of game action. You can see the length of Mark disrupting the geese. That was short from Keen. Great defensive possession by Arkansas right there. Arkansas had some problems with that Duke press at the end of the game, and they put Debo back in just to handle it, just yep. to calm things down. He's the guy that can just keep it. How about that step back, and there's the shimmy. <laughs> he does have some no tay in him. Oh, he does. I would hurt my shoulder if I tried to do the, the shimmy. <laughs> right in front of the bench. Right in front of Coach Moss. The step back, though, gave him this opportunity. Look at right? the pause. Look at the pause. Wait, where are you, where are you going? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> there it is. There's the shimmy. 
And a kiss, I believe. Hey, oh. do it all. Shimmy, kiss. <laughs> Must have still having a conversation on something, though, right? The Perfection. Yep. That's what she never stops. Yep. Never stops. I got a must story from last night's uh, women's basketball game when we have time. You're going to enjoy it. I know you are. Williams on the drive. Almost picked off by Devo. And Devo commits the foul. Why don't I tell it right now? So UCLA came in to play Arkansas, the number two ranked women's team in the country. So it must have stayed with his family to watch. He's here 30 seconds, and he's watching Kiki Rice. Knows nothing about the team, and he goes, that's got to be one of the best players in the country. She was the number two player in the draft class <laughs> in the recruiting class a year ago. He goes back to his office. He looks her up, finds out where she's ranked, checks out her social media. He's constantly searching for knowledge. But for somebody to be able to sit down and know nothing about the team and pick up the best player in the class in a matter of 30 seconds, that's what coaches do. Yeah, right? Well, I don't even, I don't know. That might be what Musk does. I, I don't know if I would put every coach in that category. That's, being able to do that, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it never stops. The evaluation, the seeing who can play and who can't play, that, it's a 24-hour game. He went back and looked up the UCLA coach, was curious about Kiki Rice. You can spot the good ones. Brazil left all open and a three to Brazil as he reaches double figures. Don't look now, Manny. This has grown to a 20-point lead, and that was a much-needed hit by McGee's. His first points in this second half for Furman. That's what Arkansas can do. Brazil passed up the three. Might as well just pull the trigger. He was shooting well the other he night. He will. Devin Wharton left it fly, but a miss. Keen against Brazil. Witt. Gets by Devo and scores. Pretty good drive to the basket. These teams look a little bit tired right now, waiting for the next media time. Yeah, that media is it's taking a little while to get here. Oh, and look at another knockdown. <laughs> Trevor Brazil. Rather have him on my team than not. There's Vanderwall flying to the rim for the flush. How about Arkansas shooting 62% for the game right now, man? Yeah, they're knocking shots down. Scrum and the rebound collected by Molnar. The shots weren't falling at times in the Bahamas. They have been since, both against Duke and against Furman. Step ball out of bounds or a foul first. I think they're going to call a foul on Arkansas. Indeed we are going to have a foul on the Razorbacks. And a timeout on the floor. Arkansas getting a little bit of separation over the Paladins from Furman. will step aside and be right back. are on this Monday Night Football double feature. On ESPN, the Titans head to Miami to face the Dolphins. On ABC, the Packers meet the Giants in New York. <laughs> Titans-Dolphins on ESPN. Packers-Giants on ABC. Arkansas with a 76-59 lead. Manny, what has allowed the Razorbacks to get that cushion, that separation here over the last five or six minutes of game play. They picked up on the defensive end. They said they've caused some turnovers for this Furman team, and, and they've, they've guarded the perimeter better, way better than the first half. And with threes, when you miss threes, you get long rebounds, and, and Arkansas puts those long rebounds in the fast transition baskets, and that's what's allowed them to, to, to expand this lead. Mark got a foul before we went to break, and Vanderwall knocks down the free throw. What do you suppose the conversation was like at the half when Furman hit eight threes in the first 20 minutes with Coach Muss and the Hawks. They hit eight more. I'm not going to want to come to practice. Understood. And Vanderbilt knocks them both in. L. Ellis controlling for the Razorbacks. Well, 
Caleb Battle needs two more points to get back to that 21-point plateau where he's been four times today. Does he have it here? Yo! Oh, I close. He had that close. one down. I swear that ball was going in, and just as I said it, then it spun out to spike. Just oh, as you said, we gotta, we gotta watch what we say. Keen has had a couple of flushes. 16 points on Saturday, giving Furman a little bit life. A moment ago, it was 20 points, and you thought this game was over, but it's back to a Baker's dozen. Yeah, and Arkansas, Ooh. Arkansas's prepared for that. I mean, that, that's what good teams do, and, and Mutz has scheduled these games to understand. You see right here, just Ellis trying to use the quickness to get the steal and Furman able to get the dunk. But that, you, that's what you have to expect. That means that this Furman team wins, has won 28 games. Wins a ton of games. They, they're going to not get so flustered. They're going to make their run. You just have to stay the course for Arkansas and continue to do what you've been doing. Such a unique program is Furman. I mean, they have an enrollment a little more than 2,000. They don't take a lot of transfers. Brazil, another block. They believe in recruiting freshmen, developing them, which is so counter to what so many teams now do with transfers. And quite frankly, I like it. I like the way they built this program. There's battle again. Now he's up to 22 as he hits another triple. Four three-pointers for battle. And Arkansas, how about a block to kickstart it all? Yeah, I mean, Brazil just doing what he does best, using that athleticism and coming down with it, and then getting it to your hot hand, getting it to your score. A nice step back. Is he going to have a game in Brazil where he has eight, nine blocks? I, mean, I can see it. I mean, lost it at six the other day, I think, against Duke. Yeah. I mean, the, the only reason he, he won't get, you know, nine blocks is because teams start to just play, okay, if he's on me, I'm passing it. Uh, I'm not even going to try to shoot it. Don't he, want to get embarrassed. He blocks jump shots and three pointers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's not much you can do. Well, I think the fans want a free brownie. Oh, they're delighted. There you go. Do we announce it? Can we get free brownies? You can have all the free media cookies you want <laughs> if you go back uh, to the room behind us. Uh, those aren't that good. Fans get a brownie because there were a couple of missed free throws inside the eight minute mark. Battle, my goodness, he's feeling it now. Heat check there. Brazil got his hand on it. The geese passed on the three. That was crafty, but again, he didn't finish. He went down hard. He's going to shoot two. I mean, this team is really good on getting and driving to the basket. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're good, but you, know, you see Blocker right there. <laughs> he's, he's a guard, but he, he goes up and contests a lot of shots. He, he's got a few blocks this season, and... That sneaky athlete where you see him, he's not one of the guys, you know, dunking and hanging on the rim as much as, you know, Brazil or or, or some of the other guys. But sneaky athlete, he's he going to some shots too, yeah. Only played 12 minutes in the first four games and missed one entirely because of illness. We talk about this era, the transfer portal and freshmen, and Locker's one of the few freshmen Getting an opportunity for some significant playing time as the geese makes yeah. them both. It's tough. Um, I, I Real tough. Someone coming out of high school, you got a, you know, a team full of graduates, full of fifth-year guys. It's, it's it's tough to get on the floor. And nowadays, like even with scholarships, you know, You're right. three of your four scholarships might go to go to transfers. And you want to keep one available? Yeah, for for one that that is. Pop in late. Well, that pops in, yeah. That's a nice pass into the corner for Smith. Extra pass for Heen. We've seen him dunking. Now we see him launching a three and pointing to the crowd. <laughs> he hit the triple. <laughs> he was blowing the smoke out of his oh, uh, man. six gun right there. Yeah. Furman again, not going away just yet. Shot clock is inside three. Nifty move by Devo. Blocker. Beat the buzzer. Did he score? I think the officials are going to take a look to see if Brazil touched that before it went through. I thought it was through first, but. Yeah, I don't think that. I think that is going to take a look. Yeah. 
That sounds good. We're going to step aside as the officials go to the monitor. We'll let you know what they find out when you come back. And what reminds me of the timely plays of Devo Davis when he was a freshman. You know, a guy who started off his career not getting as many minutes as, as he, you know, would have liked, but kind of came in into the year, made timely plays, and Bob is one of those guys just always in the right spot at the right time, and it reminds me of a Devo Davis. Well, I like that comparison in the sense that when Devo got his opportunity, he seemed to make the most or make an impact. Them. If it's yep. six minutes, if it's 12 minutes, yep. You kind of get the feeling this kid could maybe do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, and he has done the same thus far in, in, you know, playing in a bunch of big games, as you mentioned, played Duke and North Carolina already in his short college career. But, yeah, seizes his opportunity, and, you know, when you seize your opportunity, guess what? More opportunity tends to find you. It does. I, I think the one thing the coaching staff wanted to see more of is just the assists and, and distributing the basketball. He had four assists in more than 100 minutes, and quite honestly – with his passing ability, there probably needs to be more. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's a point guard. He can get guys involved, and, um, you know, it, it'll be fun to just see his game mature. Nice drive by Williams. I think he wanted a foul on the lay-in, but that's 20 points for Alex Williams. Blocker with the ball. Oh, my! You're talking about the ups? There it is. How about the dunk? <laughs> he's sneaky. You think that's going to be a layup, and he just keeps going up. He did a chin-up <laughs> for an exclamation mark. Arkansas has exceeded their per-game average. Not a block, but another shot. Alter as Smith is contending yeah, with Brazil. Oh, yeah. and that is an offensive foul. Yeah. Coach Moss not at all happy. He was right in front of Don Daly. Let's go back and see this dunk from Blocker. Just gonna go lay it up. Uh, never mind. Didn't you think he was just gonna finger yeah, roll it in? Yeah, he keep going up. Might as well put it down. Leave nothing to chance. Nope. Dunk it through. That man's not happy with that call, but you saw it early, I think, in that trip yeah, down the court. Yeah, he puts that arm back. Feels like Mark's still trying to find a little bit of game speed maybe tonight. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sat out, you know, some games, and you got to, yeah, block her again. Yeah, another just, block. Yeah, just impact player. But yeah, you sit out some games, you got to get your rhythm back, especially a, a team like Furman that, that's, that's, you know, a good team. I think the good thing for Tremont, he really should be good to go Saturday when they play Oklahoma in Tulsa. Yeah. Kind of get the cobwebs out. And, again, this guy wasn't even able to move for about three hours after they took him out on a stretcher in the Bahamas when he had 34 points in the game. Yeah, I mean, that, and you have that happen and then have to sit out and, you know, not able to get your conditioning. Walker almost Walker had his foot block. I, mean, <laughs> I tell you, he, he flies up there. Young legs. Brazil get hurt on that play? He's hopping off. Always grabbing that left ankle. ankle. Be concerning. Yeah. Hope it's nothing too serious. Just a, a, maybe a little tweak. See if we can get uh, an idea. If someone landed on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh. oh my goodness. Ah, hate that. Ice that up. Still not completely salted away yet. There's Lawson. And another basket. That's 15 points for Chandler Lawson. He's having a great game. And again, not, not doing too much, just being in the right spot, playing hard, and, and his guards are finding him. Herman has pulled all the way down here in the second half. Austin, the catch, he needs that wingspan to turn around miss that shot. You know, going back to that UNC Greensboro loss, again, the first for Eric Musselman at home against the non-conference team, he was very honest, and he said it put a dent in you. I mean, it left a, a mark, a scar, if you will. And 
you know, then you go to the Bahamas, and that didn't go exactly as planned. To get that win against Duke was big. To play pretty well tonight is another step forward as they build a little bit closer to conference play, which is coming soon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, the season is, 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 is ups and downs. It's a roller coaster, and you obviously you drop one that you don't want to, and you go to the Bahamas, don't have. You know, I think Coach Musselman is just got to get technical right here. But yeah, I mean, you, you you go to the Bahamas, don't don't have the outing you want, and then come back, get the big win against Duke. So it, all it is is stay in the course, and that's what this Arkansas team will do. And that's what they've done in the past. Um, and yeah, like you said, as you continue on and get into conference play, felt like there was something building with Musk, but I didn't think he was going to get the team with the 15 point cushion with a minute and a half to go. But uh, Boiled over. Never stop coaching. So Fagis is settling in at that free throw line. And he had the three pointer that beat Virginia. As Coach Richie said in the second round they lost by like a thousand to San Diego State. <laughs> which was uh, his quote, but uh, they can never take away right. that win against Virginia. Yeah. And leave it to Virginia to lose the first round game. Man, win the national championship or get upset. One of the two. That was a fun one. I think the geese has been at the line for about <laughs> a half an hour. This just went from a 15-point game to a 10-point game with the clock stop. not the clock hadn't moved at all. Confirming get a turnover. Mark got the timeout barely to beat the five count. And this will become a full timeout. Hey, this one not over yet. Hawks up by 10. Furman hoping for a miracle of sorts. Because he did have a 32 point game a couple of years ago against South Florida. And you see a season I 15. Mix in three blocks. Again, he had six of those against Duke, and Duke's not a team with their size and Pelopasti and others where you would expect anybody to be able to get six blocks. Yeah, you see Arkansas with a little bit different look as didn't play against the press that well against Duke. They did not. Come in with a different look and able to advance it up the court. Just a moment where it looked like Furman might get a five count of some sort. That is the 10th foul as well on the Paladins, so the Hawks can shoot two here on out. Keep in mind, they came in fifth in the country, though, in free throw attempts a game. In fact, it attempted at least 20 free throws in all eight games. I don't think they'll get there tonight. That is just their 14th. And quite honestly, they missed a few of those free throws down the stretch against Duke, which they did. gave these fans that were ready to storm the court <laughs> just a moment of concern. They had to wait a little bit. You didn't storm the court, did you? I didn't. I had uh, people asking me, and they said they were taking bets on if I if I did. Now that I, you're a grown up adult. Yeah, I was talking about bedtime. Okay, I, I was I stormed out to go to sleep. <laughs> <But> you did. <laughs> Not a bad plan. <laughs> Eleven point game. See if the Paladins go for a quick two or a three, and they're going to go to the line instead. Debo Davis got his fourth. It feels like in today's day and age in college basketball, closing out games is a son of a gun. It's tough. <laughs> it is, it is it's tough. Easy. Yeah. Jesus lived at the line. In fact, he's made all 80 shots tonight. I'll tell you, Brett, too. Uh, you know, it's a 10 point game. You know, Arkansas seems to, have, they're probably going to walk away with this one, but. There's still a lot of people in the crowd looking at every single point. I understand. That's been scored in this game. No, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Don Daly's counting out the five, and Arkansas had to go ahead and inbound. And Devo Davis, the veteran, going to run a few more seconds off the clock and then draw the foul to go shoot free throw. It's 
been an interesting scoring year for Debo. His game's five points four. Then he went 16, 10, 10, 15. Didn't score against Carolina. Three against Duke. It's almost as if it depends on what Arkansas needs that night. Yeah. If he needs to distribute, he will. And if they need him to score, he's very capable. And it's it, uh, such a luxury for this coaching staff to have a guy that doesn't really care. You know, like you said, he's 16, 15, and then I'll have a zero, then I'll have five. And, and it doesn't seem to, to fluster him at all in terms of if he's not scoring a lot. He just does what, what is needed for that specific game. And, and there's not a lot of guys like Devo Davis in college basketball, or basketball in general. Um, so fun to – Oh, goodness. <laughs> but Geese fouled on a three-point fly and a chance for four. 24 for Geese. We've oh, seen man. more four-point play opportunities in the last couple of weeks with the men's and women's teams than I've seen in a long yeah. time. I don't know. I, I feel like we, we call the – got to let them land. I get that. But we don't we don't enforce the kicking out as much as we enforce the the, the letting them land. And I, I think it's a tough call because you, you just kind of innately lean forward. And there wasn't a lot of contact. There wasn't a lot of contact there. It's tough. But here we go, a seven-point game. 112 to play. Coach Ritchie with the timeout. You know, he could have left last year as well. You know, you parlay a 28 win season, an NCAA tournament victory. Usually that comes with a mid major coach getting a big payday someplace else. But he likes what they're building in Furman. They're putting $40 million into their arena soon. And Greenville, South Carolina, pretty part of the country. And yeah. obviously, you know, he's in that position where this team's going to try and win 24, 25, six games every season. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and that, that's great that we have coaches that are that are looking to build something lasting and big at a mid-major school. Um, obviously, you know, you can hop to one of the power five or the high-major schools, but we don't see it very often where we can just, hey, I'm going to sit here at Furman and I'm going to build this thing to where, you know, who knows? Maybe we can turn into, you know, the Gonzaga of the Carolinas or – Something like that. You never know because there's so much movement in college basketball. But good job to this coaching staff for, for staying put and seeing this thing through. The question always is if you don't win your conference tournament of the SOCOM, can there tough. still be an at-large pick? Because the tough part for the Paladins is they don't get many opportunities against Power 5 teams. They don't want to play them, as yeah. we pointed out earlier. So you know they put a lot of their eggs in this basket. And even if they come up short, there's no moral victories when it comes to the, the committee, but they've proven why they can hang with a lot of big time teams. 21 for Pagese. Yeah, and, and to, to your point, you know, a, a Furman team or a SOCON team could be ranked going into their conference tournament in the top 20, and then they lose that, that championship game or lose. She's in the conference semifinal, and it's almost like clockwork that That's team right. doesn't get in, even though they were right. Another two for Chandler Lawson, and that one's out of bounds. So 17 now for Lawson, the Memphis native at Memphis transfer. Another timeout. 55.3 to play. This has not been an easy sequence for Furman playing at Princeton in New Jersey on Saturday and then coming here without their leading score. Arkansas, on the other hand, they're going to go play Oklahoma in Tulsa. And then it's a uh, finals week, so... I it, it does. <laughs> Start swinging at you, get those yep. finals and those exams done before it'll be all basketball for about three or four weeks. Did you enjoy that time frame from the end of the finals week until the start of classes? Because it was all hoops then, good yeah. or bad. Oh, I, I loved it. I loved it. After a while, you see Arkansas schedule right here. Some some good games coming up. You don't see Wilmington just handles Kentucky, Abilene Christian. That's right. Beats Oklahoma State earlier this year. Obviously, Oklahoma, Auburn, high major teams with some good games, but. To answer your question, yes, it, it was great. There were times when, you know, towards the end of the break, we were like, man, no one's on campus. We're the only people here. This is kind of like a ghost town. Uh, but, yeah, when it's just basketball, you go to practice, you get your extra work in, you get your, your treatment, uh, and then you can go play video games, do whatever you want, be a college kid after that. It, it's a fun time for sure. Another nice basket from Carter Witt. He's had a big game. 
Did Arkansas handle this pressure again? That was a quick foul by Furman. Again, within seven points. Arkansas's largest lead was at 73-53-20. Feels like this game has been played in that five to eight point range for a bulk of the contest. Yeah. Hawks are trying to get to that free throw number that I didn't think they were going to reach. They had two free throw attempts in the first half, and I said they're not going to get to 20. Well, they might. <laughs> this is number 18. Would not drop for Mark. I'm going to try to reverse jinx this one for Mark. Right, he's he's, he's going to miss this one really badly. Going to airball it? Yeah. I don't know if he's going to get anything. Room. There you. we go. I like, you, <laughs> I like how you work. Yeah. Reverse psychology. The geese. With the air ball. That was a Seinfeld sequence. If your instinct is always wrong, then the opposite of your instinct should be right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm George. I'm bald. I live with my parents. <laughs> What's at the end of it? Tell you what, Arkansas is getting plenty of work on their press break in late yeah. game situations. Yeah, this is this is good. You, you, you got it exposed a little bit in the Duke game, um, and I guarantee you they worked on this in practice. Still forty one point six remaining. Tell you what, for the Hogs, this has been a 51 point second half. That's the good news. The bad news, Furman has scored 48 in the second half. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good things on the offensive end and some things you want to clean up defensively. Um, but he, he picked it up in the second half. Battle, you know, Mark got, got involved a little bit and seen some good things from Blocker. It's just an ever, ever growing process for this Arkansas Razorbacks team, and that's, that's what it's been. You know, each of the last few years when they've made runs, where you're just figuring yourself out, you maybe drop one in the non-conference, but you, you figure it out, and then come January, February, March time, uh, this team's going to be playing its best basketball. Ten different Razorbacks have scored tonight. The battle with 24 to lead the way. One more miss might just about extinguish this one, but the geese will get called for the elbow on blocker. Yep, extended that, extended that arm. Let's see if this Furman team decides to foul. It's really easy to see that elbow. In yeah, today's yeah. Game. Off. Three officials, somebody's going to see it. About a five second difference between. The game clock and the shot clock, so Devo slipping and sliding. Chandler Lawson with the hammer. A 19-point oh, performance man. for Ben Chandler Lawson. It's a big shot here, Brent. I think Razorback fans comfortable in the fact that Devo Davis, or that's Blocker with another great dunk. I'm used to Devo putting the hammer down at the end. That was Blocker. Got another one. And Arkansas with 97 points. And maybe they take down a pesky Furman team.